As the new millennium began and the NRO celebrated its 40th anniversary, few imagined that the NRO mission was about to change abruptly. Yesterday, September 11th, was a tragic day for America. I know you join me in extending our deepest sympathies to those who are the victims of this tragedy. The intelligence community, and in turn the NRO, realized it was time to reassess priorities. Certainly one of the things the NRO learned that day is we were going to have to roll up our sleeves and get in this fight and get relevant against Al-Qaeda. Soon, advances in rocket technology aided in the fight. In the mid-2000s, the Heritage vehicles, Titan IV, uh, Atlas II and Atlas III, as well as Delta II, were all being phased out. The last two NRO payloads flew uh, in 2005. It was the last Titan IV and the last Atlas III. Uh, as the new set of launch vehicles from the EELV program, the Atlas V and the Delta IV were being phased in. And in late 2006, Boeing and Lockheed joined forces to create the United Launch Alliance. Both of their Atlas and Delta product lines have supported numerous different NRO payloads over the years. They provided a superior product for a very long time, and they've been highly successful for, uh, as a supplier to the NRO. In 2007, the NRO took the fight against terrorism to the battlefield with a critical new life-saving technology called Red Dot alerting troops to the presence of improvised explosive devices, or IEDs. The reason why it's called Red Dot because it puts a red dot on the screen of the soldiers, letting them know that there is something there, an IED is there. The time between detection and notification was drastically reduced. We can take a report off of a highly classified sensor and within 90 seconds get it to appear in a truck downrange in Afghanistan. We're saving lives and is contributing tremendously to the fight of the IED war that we have going on. The next year, the NRO declassified the fact of U.S. ground stations, making public the existence of ADF East, ADF Colorado, and ADF Southwest. Then, 10 years after the 9-11 attacks, the world's most wanted terrorist, Osama bin Laden, was cornered in his compound in Pakistan. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. What the world did not know at the time was that the NRO satellite constellations made critical contributions to the mission's success. Measurements of the compound gathered by NRO's electro-optical and radar satellite fleet allowed U.S. Special Forces to build an exact replica of the compound for training. That same year, the NRO began some well-deserved 50th anniversary celebrations. I, in your name, having been appointed the director of the National Reconnaissance Office. And in 2012, Betty Sapp became the NRO's first woman director, reflecting the increasing diversity of the workforce. The following years saw technological advancements and miniaturization of satellite components, embodied by new additions to NRO satellite constellations, CubeSats. A CubeSat is a satellite in the 1 to 10 kilogram class range. Um, it's a way to get low-cost satellites on orbit fairly quickly. Because CubeSats are so small, able to share rides into space with other payloads, or even with other agencies' rockets, they became valuable options. The idea of rideshare is we just hitch a ride on a bigger spacecraft that has mass, uh, mass availability that can take us to orbit and we benefit from that. The development of CubeSats has opened new avenues for NRO and private industry launches. So CubeSats are really significantly lower cost, lower risk. If I can provide you a command and control that once you get up there for a marginal cost, now I can fly your mission, then what mission can't I do? What, what customer can't I service? In 2015, the NRO established a permanent cadre of DOD civilians, bolstering the conviction that space was our new battlefield. The NRO and U.S. STRATCOM established the Joint Space Warfighting Forum to provide guidance in this new effort. 
In 2017, for the first time ever, the NRO partnered with a private rocket provider, SpaceX, to launch mission NROL-76 from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. That was absolutely amazing. First SpaceX launch for our organization. It was great to see the takeoff. It was great to see the relanding. First time ever on a Falcon 9. Look forward to doing more of these. The continuing growth of space exploration and reconnaissance soon led to the first new branch of the United States Uniformed Services in over 70 years, the U.S. Space Force. This is the next and natural evolution of our armed forces. It is absolutely necessary to ensure American supremacy in space. In 2020, the NRO persevered with its mission, and all scheduled launches continued successfully, despite the COVID pandemic. Today, the NRO celebrates 60 years of success, groundbreaking launch technologies, public and private sector partnerships, widespread use of combined multi-intelligence products and tools, innovative acquisitions, leveraging of commercial capabilities, and continuous adapting to new threats and challenges. That's why America congratulates the NRO for 60 very successful years and looks forward to many, many more.